Shalom Chabrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, our debut here on World Harvest, Harvest Television Network, and we are delighted to get to be with you. Israeli News Live is very well known on YouTube. We have been sharing uh, news information as well from a prophetic uh, point of view on Israeli News Live about the events that are happening in the Middle East, Eastern Europe, Russia, Far East, etc. We speak in our, our news broadcast headquarters here about six different languages, including that of the Russian language, the Hebrew language, Hungarian, several other languages as well. And by utilizing these languages, we scour the news throughout these, this region of the world and also we're live and in person on location covering things as well in Israel, throughout Europe, etc. and even right there at the Syrian border to catch those battles as they break there. We're coming now to you here on World Harvest Television Network to be able to share a weekly broadcast, kind of an overview every week of the news broadcast that we have shared daily with you here on our YouTube channel. And in fact, today's broadcast is about Damascus, as the famed biblical prophecy from Isaiah 17 speaks about that Damascus becomes a ruinous heap. And this one here was an article we came out with on May the 10th, 2017, U.S. preparing to take down Damascus. And although that may seem very provocative, what caused President Trump to change his own position on that of President Bashar al-Assad was a recent gas attack. A gas attack that President Trump believes was actually carried out or at least was responsible for the gas attack uh, that was done there in western Syria was blamed on President Bashar al-Assad. But if you watch Israeli News Live on YouTube, you know good and well we have covered the 2013 and the more recent uh, sarin gas attack. And in both cases, there is too many objectionable, objectionable issues there that there is not any possible way that you could really put this at the hands of President Bashar al-Assad. 2013, Aaron Erdem, uh, who spoke before the parliament there, in his, own, in his own country, in the Turkish country, and basically indicted the former prime minister of Turkey of allowing sarin gas to cross inside of Syria and to be used by ISIS uh, near Damascus there that was later blamed on Bashar al-Assad. And according to Aaron Erdem, it was done with the intent to blame it on Assad to justify the U.S. putting boots on the ground. Now, here we are in 2017, and yet another sarin gas attack breaks out, and we had reported the day before the U.S. was about to make a strike on Syria. But it wasn't so much a strike with a sarin, uh, with, a, with Tomahawk cruise missiles. We had already been seeing information that let us know the U.S. is getting ready to take down Damascus, even before that sarin gas attack. Let's get right into this prophetic insight broadcast here because we don't have a whole lot of time and we've got a lot of ground to cover. Let's start right off with the biblical prophecy of Isaiah 17, the burden of Damascus. Behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city and it shall be a ruinous heap. If you understand the Hebraic language at all, the word taken away from being a city is not necessarily by being blown up by some nuclear bomb, but it is basically by a war of some sort. All right, the cities of Aurora are forsaken. They shall be for flocks which shall lie down and none shall make them afraid. The fortress also shall cease from Ephraim and the kingdom from Damascus. What does Ephraim got to do with anything with Damascus? Ephraim being the, the house of Israel, the northern kingdom that went into captivity. You're going to find that out in just a moment. They shall be as the glory of the children of Israel, saith the Lord of hosts. And in that day it shall come to pass that the glory of Jacob shall be made thin and the fatness of his flesh shall wax lean. And let me tell you something, everything about what is happening around Damascus and will happen around Damascus has everything to do with what we just read. Let's take a look at this article here. This happens to be an Israeli article uh, that, that, we, that just came out. Uh, not too long ago, and this was showing General Dunford. I say an Israeli article, he said, well, gosh, Steve, that's the Russian language. Yeah, there's two million Russian Jews living inside of Israel. So yes, we do have uh, Russian news uh, that, is, that is put out in Israel. And the article right here, I'll share with you in the English language in just a moment here, but General Dunford, this was his third visit uh, to Israel, and he was being awarded a very high medal of honor by the Israeli government. But you know, that's not the only reason why he was there. 
there. General Joseph Dunford, he was received by the IDF general with, with the highest military of honors there, Gadi Eisenbaut, who received him and gave him this medal. That was on May the 9th. But here's what was really interesting. This is, what, this is what is actually stated here. Your visit to Israel is yet another confirmation of a strong security ties between our countries. And the U.S. and Israel are facing complex st strategic challenges that we have to cope with together. Keep that in mind. It's going to have a lot to do with the biblical prophecy in a, in a moment. The head of the Defense Ministry of Israel said at a meeting with Dunford, Lieberman also thanked the commander of the U.S. Army for his friendly attitude to the Jewish state. Among the issues to be discussed by the American general in Israel are the situation in Syria in particular. The problem of chemical weapons left in the arsenals of the Assad army developments in the Sinai Peninsula where the Islamic State militants are actively operating in the attempts to transfer the newest Hezbollah types of weapons. Now friends, I have to tell you something. I understand and I do uh, stand with President, uh, excuse me, Prime Minister Netanyahu when it comes to defending the children of Israel that are living in our homeland today, knowing that Hezbollah is, is certainly a threat to the security of Israel from the north. And I realize here in the la since uh, the December of 2016, moving forward this year, Israel has made multiple strikes on Hezbollah convoys, or at least this is what is being reported in the Israeli government there. Now also, Israel has struck Syrian targets as well, and this has really got me a bit concerned because Syria has not attacked Israel since President, uh, president uh, Bashar al-Assad has been the president of Syria and in fact in 2011 was trying to make peace with uh, Israel and had even acknowledged publicly Israel's right to exist and was trying to get the Lebanese government to do the same. So there's just a little bit of concern that I can see that is going on because you have to remember when it comes to Israel, this is my people, this is my heritage, both my parents, both my father was a Sephardic Jew, my mother was an Ashkenazi Jew. And so, you know, it's very much at the heart of my own uh, everyday thinking and my love and uh, et cetera. But uh, I'm, I don't always, I can't always say I agree with everything that our government is doing. There is concerns uh, there. And many of us know this. We know that there are things that go on sometimes in the government, not everyone in the government by no means, uh, but there are things that are going on that doesn't make sense. I mean, we can just look at some of the parades that have been held in Jerusalem that definitely would have never, ever been held in the time of King David, I can tell you that for sure. All right, let's move right on here. Warfiles.ru, another Russian news site that just came out. Uh, recently, this was on May the 9th. Of course, it's been several weeks now uh, since that actually, or two weeks since that actually took place there. But this site uh, really brought to, to light something that I had been following already for, uh, in fact, by the time this came out, we'd already been following this for more than a week. And that was a movement, a mass movement of U.S. military and British military equipment inside of Jordan. And that's exactly what this article is speaking about, and it goes into great detail. I had already seen the pictures a day before, uh, but then I would found out what it was all about. And the, and the Russian article here basically states here, American and Jordanian forces deploy on the border with Syria. Now we know that the, the U.S. and the British forces have been training the rebels that are fighting in Syria against President Bashar al-Assad for, for years now already since this battle began. But it goes on to state, Arab and media report a large concentration of American, British, and Jordanian forces on the border with Syria. The al Mahadeen television channel reports that forces of 2,300 people have been deployed on the Jordan-Syrian border. The newspaper Ra al yaum writes that the deployment involves tanks, helicopters, and well as British and American forces. Rai al -Yom, referring to his own sources in Jordan, writes about a large movement of troops on the border with the governorship of Dara and Swade in Tal uh, Shihab Nisib and Ramata. In these areas, several British artillery battalions were deployed as well as 4,000 Syrian trained in Jordan. Now, that's kind of interesting when they say Syrian train. According to President Bashar al-Assad, he said they call this a civil war. He said, but what's so strange, he said, how can it be a civil war? 
He said when there's 35 different nationalities that are fighting as part of the Free Syrian Army, mercenaries that have been brought in from all over the world. So it's really not a civil war. Now some also might argue, well, Brother Steve, you know, it's prophecy. Even in the book of Amos, Damascus, that the, the castles of Ben Hadad will be burned down to the ground. All right, and it'll be no more. But you have to remember, Damascus prophecy and Amos is not the same in Isaiah. Something a lot of people are not aware of. Two different prophecies. All right. Now, if you look at your on your screen and behind you right here, we have here, this is the circle here on your map. This is the area there where that particular picture was taken at. Dada is right here and, the, and, and uh, Waid is right here on the map here in Syria. All right, that's where that is. Now I have another red circle on the map over here to the far east, and we're going to get to that red circle here in just a moment. But let's continue on. Now while this is all going on, uh, as this was happening, we know that Foreign Minister Lavrov was headed to the United States, and this meeting has already happened, and uh, he was to meet with President Donald Trump. All right, and but while this is going on, Fox News was already reporting that uh, Russia was sending even more weapons into Syria, uh, helping Bashar al-Assad get ready to have a new fight against uh, uh, the Free Syrian Army. Well, we know it's being a fight against the Free Syrian Army because of why all of that military equipment there that just got sent in over there uh, that come dropping down inside of the country. So this is where the concern is, and we see these things here. When you see all these battle tanks going on right now, right now, and then we realize that yes, you know, Russia is sending in more military equipment because they know the United States is about to cross the borders with the Free Syrian Army uh, that they have been training inside of there. But this time, it may not just be the Free Syrian Army. That's what we're going to get into. But anyway, Russia sent over uh, during this trip that Lavrov was to meet with President Trump. He, they were sending over howitzers, dozens of new artillery howitzers to Syria, and and a lot of other military equipment, 21 MBs, etc. Now already happened. Uh, this is a, a website and Twitter page. The already happened is, twi is the Twitter account of Lorenzo, a friend of ours. He's an Italian journalist. Uh, he also, if you put a hyphen between already and the word happened and go to dot com, you can get his, uh, his website as well. Always on top of some incredible uh, uh, news releases of, of military movements that are going on. But he had reported this here back around April the 2nd or the 3rd, I believe it was, U.S. Roro ship Liberty Passion and NATO warship AO-5 carrying military vehicles are heading toward Beirut, Lebanon. Can you imagine that? All right, and even at my own shock of this going on, now this was before what I just shared with you, that military equipment that was that is brought out by the Russian language news site there that's on Jordan's northern border against Syria, right there, Syria's southern border, just below Damascus, due south, in fact. Uh, this information here that already uh, that Lorenzo is sharing on his Twitter page there was happening long before uh, any of this other was going on. And he had noted on here that the Roro Liberty Passion was making a transit. It made a beeline, and according to this, was this was on April the 2nd of 2017, that ship was to dock and port at Beirut, Lebanon on the 4th. Well, it did exactly that. And then in another article as well, we have uh, Italian journalist Manlio Danucci, and on an article entitled, From Camp Darby, U.S. Weapons for the War in Syria and Yemen. Well, you know, it's really interesting. I have two different paragraphs from this article, but he talks about as well the Liberty Passion transporting 250 military vehicles from Lavrano to Aquaba. Uh, the ship arrived at Aquaba on April the 7th, making its way there via the Suez Canal. Two days before in Washington, President Trump had received King Abdullah for the second time since February, thus confirming U.S. support to the Jordanian Jordan again against, as he calls it, the terrorist threat coming from Syria. What terrorist threat? We have to understand, it's been under President Barack Obama that these al-Nusra, al-Qaeda, all of these, they, they smuggle weapons into these guys to help fight against Bashar al-Assad. And that's been pointed out, uh, numerous reporters from all over the world that have reported out of Syria that have covered these things. In the other paragraph, it says, various reports indicate that an increasing number of U.S. troops excuse me, fitted out with tankers and armored vehicles are moving to the Jordanian-Syrian border. The objective, 
as he questions, to take possession using even Jordanian troops of the southern band of Syrian territory where special U.S. and British forces are operating in support of the Free Syrian Army, which is fighting with ISIS. As early as February, President Trump had discussed with King Abdullah the possibility of establishing safe zones in Syria. Safe zones is a code for balkanizing Syria, now an option given that following Russian intervention is no longer possible to control the entire territory. So it seems that the U.S. has given up completely on overthrowing President Bashar al-Assad. But do you remember when I shared with you just a moment ago about Beirut, Lebanon and how that Lorenzo on his side had shown that there was a ship going to Beirut, Lebanon? That seems almost far-fetched to believe that that could be possible. Why would we send U.S. military equipment into Beirut, Lebanon if it isn't going to end up being used against Damascus? Well, I did some research on that. In February the 28th of 2017, U.S. generals were discussing military aid on a Lebanon visit. Now, this is no coincidence either because this is also the time when President Trump had been meeting with King Abdullah II. Don't forget that. They've been working on surrounding Damascus. All right, Beirut, the commander of U.S. forces in the Middle East, has met with top officials in Lebanon to discuss American military aid and other efforts to contain the fallout from civil war in neighboring Syria. Well, that's a good excuse. Army General Joseph Botel, the head of U.S. Central Command, met with Lebanese President Michael Owen, Prime Minister Saeed, Harer and Defense Minister Yaqub Saraf upon his arrival in Beirut on Monday. So I guess they are doing something. And what really got us started on Israeli News Live was this article here. It's an Israeli uh, news company, newsru.co.il, from the Russian Jews living inside of Israel there. And this article here was laying out a plan where the United States was working uh, with the British government and as well with the, uh, the Jordanians to put military troops not to the south there of Jordan, but to the far east of Jordan along the Jordanian-Syrian-Iraqi border. Now this was before we even saw the ship going to Beirut, right? Watch this article right here. Media. This was newsru.co.il. This is in the English language. Jordan, U.S. and U.K. begin operation on Syrian border. As the Al Hayat newspaper published in London City's political sources in Jordan, the U.S., British, and Jordanian military forces will launch a joint operation against terrorists on the Jordan-Syrian border. The most dangerous of the group operating in this is the Khalid bin Walid army, the local branch of the Islamic State. It is Main bases are located in the area where the borders of Jordan and Syria and Iraq meet. Only in 70 kilometers inside of that border are the Iranian Corps of Guards, Islamic Revolution. The public publication notes that their presence in the border area raises fears not only of Jordan but also of Israel. And yes, Iran is a threat to Israel's security, just like Hezbollah is. But what is Damascus' threat? Why is there a Damascus threat, friends? It can't be. All right, now look what we got here on the map here. This is the place the article News Are You just talked about. This is where they are there. That's due east of Damascus. Now they have them down here, just below Dara and Al Suwaid. They have them in Beirut, Lebanon, to the west and to the south. And the U.S. already has forces there just north there of Damascus. Damascus is being completely surrounded. So now let's go back to the biblical prophecies and look at it. The burden of Damascus, behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city. And it shall be a ruinous heap. Drop down to verse 3 and 4. The fortress also shall cease from Ephraim, and the kingdom from Damascus, and the remnant of Syria. They shall be as the glory of the children of Israel, saith the Lord of hosts. The fortress also shall cease from Ephraim. What fortress? Damascus. When Damascus falls, why has Damascus become a fortress for Ephraim? Or in this case, we could say the house of Israel. Do we remember when Yeshua, when he was here on the earth, Jesus, 2,000 years ago, and he says to his apostles and to the 70, go only into the lost sheep of the house of Israel? You remember when he preached in Galilee how that there were those that came from Syria that heard him gladly? Remember when Paul on his road to Damascus is knocked down and blinded and the Lord says to him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? The oldest known churches are there inside of Damascus. 
And notice in verse 4, And that day it shall come to pass that the glory of Jacob shall be made thin, and the fatness of his flesh shall wax lean. Jacob, again, Israel, all right? The glory. See? What is it? Ephraim, those were some of the earliest believers of the Messiah. Right? And what do we have? And this news here by BBC, Syria's beleaguered Christians. Right? And this, let me, let me read to you what it says in this article. Because when you take down Bashar al-Assad out of Syria, the Christians will lose a safe haven. You may not believe it, but it's true. I've had Christians writing me from Syria that watch this broadcast on Israeli News Live there and on YouTube there, and they write me and they say, Steve, tell the Christian friends in America our only hope is Bashar al-Assad. He's the only one that's ever protected the Christians. Notice what it says in this article from BBC. Nor has that war spared the Christian community. Thousands have been forced from their homes by the threat from hardline Islamist rebels and jihadist militants. The very ones that the United States back. The very one that even Israel, my own country, the people I love, they back them as well. Now, I know Israel helps both, both wounded, whether it be children or soldiers or whatever, but as Israel's policy is, they don't ask them who they're affiliated with. But... It's not, it's not the, uh, I can tell you one thing, it's definitely not Assad's government people that are fighting that are being helped. Watch what he says here. In areas seized by the jihadist group Islamic State, Christians have been ordered to convert to Islam, pay uh, Yazia, um, a religious levy, or face death in the Syrian province of Hasik on February, February, in February 2015. Hundreds of Christians are feared to have been kidnapped by the militants. Senior Christian clerics, and I'm not, I didn't put them all in here, have been, also been kidnapped by unknown gunmen. Suspicion for the abductions has fallen on Nusra Front, Al-Qaeda's Syrian affiliate. This is a shame, friends. So the falling of Damascus, though, now we see also, we see in Amos, it speaks about Damascus, you know, for, 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 uh, for the transgressions also is brought down, the palaces of, of Ben-Hadad. But this is a prophecy that's been fulfilled. The one in Isaiah 17 has never been fulfilled. So there's a difference. Notice what Time Magazine reported as well. Syrian Christians leaders call on U.S. to end support for anti-Assad rebels. So it's not just me saying it, friends. We've got them con contacting us, but it's also Time reports it. The stories told by five top Syrian Christian leaders about the horrors their churches are experiencing at the hands of Islamist extremists are biblical in their brutality. Dropping down in the article a little bit, it says right here, National Evangelical Synod of Syria and Lebanon explains how the rebels blew up his church and then pointed the finger at the regime. Talking about President Bashar al-Assad. They blew it up, he says, and then they point the finger at Bashar al-Assad and said he did it. Who do you think then does the chemical weapons attacks in and then blames it on President Assad? You have to understand, even with President Trump, I don't blame President Trump. President Trump is going on the intel that he's being given. We've covered that. You'd be surprised some of the garbage that's given to him. And that's because they're relying on some of these terrorist groups for the information. Going back, again, like I said, so the fortress shall cease from Ephraim, right? Exactly. Damascus, when it's taken away, there will be no more fortress. So the, the destruction of Damascus also will kill the oldest Christians known. And it says that they, that they become the remnant of Syria. They shall be as the glory of the children of Israel, saith the Lord of hosts. They wax lean. Now, will Russia step in to help? Well, according to Medvedev, maybe they will. American Syria strike on the verge of a military clash with Russia. Now you keep in mind, because this has a lot to do with biblical prophecy as well. Let's drop down to verses 7 and 8 in Isaiah 17. At that day shall a man look to his makers, and his eyes shall, uh, shall have respect to the Holy One of Israel, and shall not look to the altars, the work of hands, neither shall respect that with, which his fingers have made with their groves or the images. Now all that's doing is shedding, setting up the timeline that when Damascus is destroyed, that also Israel is going to recognize her Messiah. Watch what happens here. But this is more than just Damascus, and we're getting close to the end of our broadcast here, friends. So exciting. In that day, verse 9, shall his strong city be as a forsaken bow in the uppermost branch with which they left because of the children, watch this, because of the children of Israel, and there shall be desolation. So the children of Israel, right? 
Because thou hast, watch this, because thou hast forgotten the God of thy salvation. This isn't the house of Israel, the children. The children of Israel, friends, is all 12 tribes. So when you look at verse 9, verse 9 is telling you how that this is going to come about. And it's indicting the house of Judah and the house of Israel for this collapse. I think maybe this is why Isaiah kind of uses the name Ephraim in there instead of Israel at first. To show that there's a believing community there. In the United States, there's many of the children of the house of Israel, many of the remnants of the house of Israel live in the United States today. I don't say that all the Christians are the house of Israel, by no means. That's not my point here. My point is to show that we have, our, our people, the Jewish people, we have been scattered to the four winds of the earth. 780 years before we were ever, uh, before Judah was scattered, the house of Israel was scattered. So you think that several of these people ended up over in America? Sure they did. All right, because thou hast forgotten the God of thy salvation and has not been mindful of the rock of thy strength, which is Yeshua, Christ Jesus, now he's the rock. Therefore shalt thou plant pleasant plants and shall set it with strange slips. It's because we forgot. Even America, Israel today, Israel's not mindful of her own rock. So it's actually indicting Israel. First it indicts the United States because thou hast forgotten the God of thy salvation and hast not been mindful of the rock of thy strength. It indicts both Israel and the United States for letting this happen. But it's not in ignorance. It's only because we forgot. Therefore shalt thou thy plant pleasant plants, and thou shalt set with strange slips. In other words, we, 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 we allow it to happen. We allowed the, the, uh, the arming of al-Nusra, al-Qaeda. We allowed that ISIS got armed under President Barack Hussein Obama. All these things were permitted to be done. In that day shalt thou make thy plant to grow, and in the morning shalt thou make thy seed to flourish, but the harvest shall be, shall be a heap in the day of grief and a desperate sorrow. Because we forgot that it's going to affect our brothers and sisters living in Damascus. Woe to the multitude of many people which make a noise like the noise of the sea. That was ISIS and all these affiliates that have come in and fought. As, as President Bashar al-Assad says, I'm not facing uh, uh, the Syrian government, uh, is not facing a civil war with its own people, but with 35 different nations. And what else? And to the rushing of nations, they make a rushing like a rushing of mighty waters. NATO will come in and back the United States and they will take down President Bashar al-Assad. But it's not going to end well. The nations shall rush like the rushing of many waters, but God shall rebuke them and they shall flee far off and shall be chased as the chaff of the mountains before the wind and like a rolling thing before the whirlwind. And behold, an evening tide trouble and before the morning he has not... This is the portion of them that spoil us and the lot of them that rob us. I'm Stephen Benoon. You've been watching Israeli News Live, the prophetic impact.